What is up everybody? Today I'm going to show you exactly how to create this curvy SVG text path animation that's activated on scroll, fully equipped with options for speed and direction. Now if you're interested in downloading the project files for this, check out the top link in the YouTube description. I'll shut up now, let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, the first thing we're going to do is I'm in here in Figma because it can handle SVG graphics and I just want to create the Bezier curve first. So I already created it here, but just to show you, hit P or go, go up here and get the pen tool. And I started at the very left, hold shift, come out here around the center, left click and drag to create a Bezier curve and then get yourself right back to the starting point. Now, of course, you can do any type of shape with SVG that you want, but this here is pretty much the most typical. You can make it more wavy if you want, do whatever. After you have it done, right click, copy, paste as right here as SVG, all right? So that copies it to the clipboard. We'll go up here temporarily. I, I'm just going to get open my notepad and I pasted that code right there. Okay, um, now we're going to revert to the actual HTML and CSS. So for that, I have a few um, tags already. We have a section up here and a section down here, and they're empty, and that's just to give us some scroll room. Uh, if you look in the SAS file, we'll see we have a section with a height of 100 viewport height, very simple. Also body, nothing uh, exciting happening here. The type of font that I want for this is Bboss Nue, which is also being imported right here from Google Fonts. And then we have our container, which is gonna actually house our, or contain our SVG. Um, and we're just using display flex and we're just trying to center it vertically and horizontally, whatever gets placed in there. So at this point, it would probably be a pretty good time to go ahead and paste that SVG graphic in. All right, and let's get it situated. Now, I'm already uh, viewing this with the live server. Um, let me go ahead and open that again. And we scroll down. Here is our SVG graphic right there, ready to rock. Okay, so how do we actually get text on this thing? And by the way, we're gonna go ahead and hide this stroke as well. But how do we get text placed on there? Well, very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a text attribute here. Oops, not that, not text area, that's not ideal. Well, let's just do it this way, the old fashioned way. All right, and then we're gonna add a text path attribute. So text path. ID is going to be equal to text hyphen path. We're also going to have an href of curve and then start offset is very important. This is an attribute specific to text path that will allow you to control the starting point of the actual uh, text on the path. So if we just put zero, it's gonna start right at the beginning um, and then Inside of here is where we place our text. So we're gonna say animate this text along the curve. Let's save this and see what has actually happened. All right, oh looky, nothing has actually happened. And that's because we have to give this, this right here, this href reference to this hashtag curve needs to be ID equals curve. We also wanna get rid of the stroke and we're gonna specify fill equals transparent right here, otherwise it's going to add black between the curves. And we're also going to take off uh, fill equals none, and I got rid of the width and the height attribute as well. So if we save this and we go back, we can now see right down here our tiny little text that's starting on the curve. So if we adjust this to say like 20 or whatever, we go back, we'll see that it moves it along. And so it's gonna be a matter of, through JavaScript, taking and animating this start offset position, and that's how you can create the actual animation. Now let's go back here in our main.sass file, and let's go ahead and make some adjustments to our SVG itself. We're going to say SVG uh, overflow visible. This is important because if you have real large text on that path, which we currently don't, it'll get cut off or clipped at the top sometimes. And so this will make a, a, a uh, you know, large. We also want it to be responsive, so width 100%. And then what we're also going to do is take our actual text path 
and we're going to say, let me get this a little bit larger for us all. We'll say fill, um, let's make this 333, and then also font size large and beefy, five rem units. So now we've got something large. All right, so we can see this is also responsive. Awesome. So now at this point is where we're gonna switch gears and focus on a little bit of JavaScript so that we can make this thing actually animate. So I'm gonna go back here, we're gonna go down here, we'll just write some inline JavaScript down here. And the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to uh, add wrap everything in a DOM content loaded listener right here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that sidebar with Control B. And that way we'll make sure everything's loaded for our code. And then inside of here, we're going to have four different constant variables. All right, so we have, oops, what am I doing here? All right, so we have here a text path, which is actually getting our get element by ID, our text path up here, which is the ID. We have a scroll speed, so we can adjust this. We have an animation direction, so if you want the, it to go left or right, you just put left or right. And then we also have start position, and we can change this value to set the starting position in percentage value. So negative 100% push it all the way off. Now next up, we're gonna go ahead and create a function called update text position. And then inside of here, sorry about that, we're gonna have uh, three different constants. The first two work hand in hand. We have to gain access to our container. So this is our container right here. And this is the element, the section class container that wraps around everything. Um, and then the container rect is this get bounding client rect. This provides us with the X and Y position as long with, along with the size of this container. And we're gonna, use, gonna need to be using the intersection observer API in order to make all this work. This is the vanilla JavaScript way of doing uh, things like scroll activated animations. If you wanted to make it a little bit more simple, you can use some sort of like library, JavaScript library for scroll animation, such as scroll magic or uh, GSAP's uh, scroll uh, plugin as well. Okay, and then finally, we also have to get the window height as well. And then inside of here, uh, we're gonna have a big if statement and there's a lot happening here. So I'm just gonna paste this in and get this formatted back up. All right, so we're basically getting this container rect top and bottom position, essentially saying once this is in the viewport with the help of the intersection observer, uh, then execute whatever is happening here. And this is uh, a direction multiplier. This line right here basically uh, look, takes a look at the value uh, of animation direction. If it's right, it's gonna make it scroll right. If it's left, it's gonna go left with a ternary operator down here. We also have a start position. Let's move this over. This right here is what actually um, sets this, this property of start offset uh, based on the scroll position and the window height and it's multiplying a few different things uh, in order to give us a percentage value of our, based on our scroll speed that we specified up here in the settings and also the direction multiplier. Finally, we take that value and we update the attribute of start offset right here, and by default it's zero, uh, and we apply it to this value right here with a percentage format. All right, kind of complex, a lot happening there. But uh, that should be good to go right there. And then finally, we also have uh, the inter intersection observer stuff. I'm just gonna paste this in. By the way, you can have access to this code by clicking the top link in the YouTube description. And I'm going to take everything that I just pasted here. All right, so we have our observer, uh, which is creates a new instance of the intersection observer. And this is just boilerplate stuff when it comes to intersection observer. Um, we're gonna observe the text path, and then we have a uh, event listener of scroll where we pass in the function up here. All right, a lot to digest. Let's see if it works. Oh, look at that. So you could play with those values such as the speed and the direction. Like for instance, if you want this to go left, uh, we'd also have to update, I believe, the start position, otherwise it might not show up. So now it's going the other way. 
All right, and also the scroll speed, it'll go faster or slower based on the value that you have here. 2.5 I think works well with that amount of text. All right, and then finally, just for something extra and something uh, to make the project a little bit more interesting, uh, I'm going to put in an H1 element right after container. It's so curvy. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to go switch back to our main.sass file and we'll take and style our H1 with a position fixed uh, and a Z index negative one, opacity only 7%, big font size and a line height to get it closer. And there we go. We can kind of see this watermark right there. And it just makes it a little bit more interesting. And that, my friends, is exactly how you create a scroll activated SVG Bezier text animation.